All of us will remember the 2002 fire season. Years of drought, record temperatures, plenty of fuel. At times, it seemed all of America was burning. I'm Walter Cronkite. I'd like you to hear something. Electricity's out in the entire town, and I may have the only working generator. Uh, QSL loud and clear. Do you have any priority messages? They're just two average guys who saw the need and volunteered. All the other stations, please stand by. We're They're radio to... hams, the... amateurs, giving of their own time and spending their own money, trying to help out when and where America needs it most. Not just at wildfires, but at earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes. Just one tornado now, the other one died. At floods, at any disaster. Hams belonging to amateur radio's emergency groups were called out on September 11th when America came under attack. Cell phone and landline circuits were jammed and virtually useless, but dozens of radio amateurs helped the police and fire departments and other emergency services maintain communications in New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. Their country asked, and they responded without reservation. But being a good Samaritan sometimes brings with it a risk. And sometimes it's not just risky, it's downright dangerous. That's exactly what happened in Colorado in June 2002 on the 137,000 acre Hayman fire. This is rural America out here. You can't always rely on a cell phone and when you need help. It looks like the wind shifted back to the west and uh, or northwest and uh, it's, it's moving the fire back in this direction. The fire is just right over this ridge here behind me. It's uh, starting to get close. Looks like we're going to have to prepare to get out of here pretty shortly. The sky had already turned ominously dark. The air was thick with smoke, making breathing more difficult. The sun reduced in intensity to little more than a light bulb through the smoky haze. The wind, increasing in speed, began blowing the fire toward the volunteers. The sheriff came through a little bit ago and asked us how fast we could get out of here. We're basically right across the road from the last fire line. So they stood by their radios, handling emergency communications for the police, the fire, the Tuller County Office of Emergency Services. Ted, can I get a status update your location, please? Uh, things are pretty quiet. Uh, firefighters should be coming in for supper before long. The role of amateur sure radio operators in this particular event has been very significant. We've provided a lot of communication capability. We're in an area where it's difficult to communicate. As a result, uh, our capabilities greatly enhance uh, the efforts of law enforcement, of firefighting, of the Red Cross, and the Salvation Army. It takes a lot of cheeseburgers to fight a forest fire. They look pretty good, though. <laughs> in the end, there was a break in the weather. The winds changed, and all of the emergency workers, the firefighters, the police, the radio amateurs, handling the communications, all of them were safe. This is WG0N. I'll be coming back to the uh, command center. You know, we call them radio amateurs, but their skill levels are anything but amateur. These are people who in any other realm would be called professionals. They're the people who know how to put the pieces together, know how to build the networks, know how to get information from one place to another when every other system has failed. I don't think that's amateur. Ham radio has been around for a hundred years, but that doesn't mean out of date. Even America's space shuttle and the International Space Station have ham radio on board, and it's not just for the enjoyment of the crew. Do you tend to re-evaluate your life when you look at the Earth? Over. When you float up here above uh, the Earth in our little spacecraft and look down at the great big spacecraft that we all fly on, it makes us all think about uh, what our priorities are. Over. Someone once said, and it's probably true, 
that amateur radio is the only fail-safe communication system in the world. Many of you know I'm a sailor. I really enjoy being on the sea with the wind at my back, underway, under sail. What most of you don't know is I'm a radio ham too. My call is KB2GSD. And you can bet that when I'm on the ocean, even if the GPS, the radar, and the ship to shore fail, I've still got my ham radio station. It really is the best backup communication system in the world. And that's the way it is.